Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television is sponsored by Potash Corp. of White Springs. Potash Corp., helping nature provide. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Perspective. This is a public affairs presentation of Florida Gateway College. My name is Mike McKee, and my guest on the program is Dr. Steve Rourke. We're going to be talking about cardiology, and his organization is called the Cardiac and Vascular Institute. Got some news for you about heart health. We'll do that when we come back. You have your own goals and a journey to follow. And that's why Florida Gateway College offers a bridge to success, starting from where you are now. I wanted more in the medical field. I wanted a steadier pace. That's why we offer licensed paramedics a way to become a registered nurse in a little over a year. I love being a nurse. You want to know why? Because I'm making a difference. Start your journey today at Florida Gateway College. Welcome back to Perspective here on Florida Gateway College Television. My guest on the program is Dr. Steve Rourke. He is a cardiologist at the Cardiac and Vascular Institute in Gainesville, Lake City, and Stark. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, you know, it seems like uh, uh, a lot of folks have heart disease, and uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, heart disease itself and some uh, new treatments that are available uh, with you today. But first of all, talk about uh, heart. Is, is it heart, is it a, a, a part of aging? Do people, or, or are there predisposed conditions that, that people have? Or is it a combination of both? I think it's both. Um, the, the most common problem we deal with in, in taking care of heart disease is vascular disease, which is blockage of the arteries or atherosclerosis. So it's when your arteries block up from risk factors, and those would include things like high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, smoking, uh, family history. So all those things contribute to your risk of developing heart disease. Um, certainly it becomes more and more common as you get older, but uh, with stresses in, in life and all we see it now, sometimes in people in their 30s and 40s, so it's yeah, that, rampant. That, is that unusual, I mean, or, is, or conditions like if you a heavy smoker or you drink or you have high blood pressure and those combinations you can have heart disease at a very early age? Oh absolutely. I, I would say the worst uh, thing you could do to yourself is smoke. Uh, the people that have heart disease at a young age almost always smoke. Uh, the other thing that that really increases the incidence of heart disease is diabetes. So those would be the two biggest. What about diet? I, I hear sometimes that, well I've heard in the past that your arteries get clogged because you have a high intake in fat in your, in your diet. Is that another contributing factor? Sure, absolutely. The, the, the diet can sort of affect, I guess, three things. One is your weight, so obesity makes it more likely you're going to have heart disease. Second would be uh, your cholesterol. So cholesterol is a combination of weight, diet, and then there's a lot of genetic factors. Um, and, uh, and, and then your, your diet you know, can affect blood pressure if you have a lot of salt in your diet. Uh, we've gotten over the last 10, 20 years uh, very good medicines to take care of blood pressure. We have, I mean, we have cabinets full of different kinds of medicines, and we have these drugs called statins, which many, many people are on now that can dramatically lower cholesterol. So, if you have high cholesterol and you change your diet and lose weight, you might be able to drop it by 15 to 20 percent. Statins can drop it by 50 percent or more. I guess the key, doctor, is to uh, see your your local physician before you need to see a specialist, correct? That's, that's the way it usually works. The, the people we see in the office are typically referrals or consults from the primary care doctors um, who get concerned about, you know, blood pressure, cholesterol, chest pain, um, sometimes heart failure, sometimes heart rhythm problems. So there's lots and lots of different kinds of things we can see in the office. Well, I guess the good news is that the medicine has come a long way from back in the day where open heart surgery was what you had to have happen. So let's talk a little bit about some of the treatments. You mentioned medications. That's probably the first 
line of, of treatment is to try to get it under control with, with medications. But say medication is not enough and we're to the point where you've got some serious problems. They come see you and what happens? Well, if we see a patient in the office with chest pain, which we call angina, then we make a decision about whether to do a stress test to try and make a diagnosis or whether we go to the catheterization laboratory and actually take pictures of the arteries under a special x-ray movie camera. And, uh, you know, depending on the situation, the risk factors, the age, the symptoms will, will make that decision. Uh, catheterizations tell you exactly what the arteries look like, if there's blockage where they are, and then from that you make a decision about treating with medicines or going forward and fixing the artery with a balloon or a stent, uh, which we do in the cath lab, or whether if there's lots of blockage in critical locations, then sometimes we refer on for heart surgery. And that means uh, when you're talking that heart surgery, you're talking about bypass and taking arteries from leg, leg veins and actually Right, so you bypass the blockages. Usually they take one artery from inside the chest called the internal mammary artery, which they t it's under your rib cage. They take it off and hook it into the, an artery called the LAD on the front of the heart. And then they would take segments of vein from your leg and bring that up and hook it to your aorta and then go on past the blockage. And of course, that type of surgery has to be done in Gainesville, North Florida Regional. Let's talk about what can be done here. Now, you mentioned the heart cath and the heart cath lab. Talk, talk about some news. You, you're going to announce some news here uh, today about what can be done now in Lake City. Well, currently at Lake City Medical Center, our group does catheterizations. So we can go in and look at the arteries, look at the heart pumping function, look at the valves. And then if somebody needs to be fixed with an angioplasty or stent, we have to transfer them down to North Florida Regional in Gainesville. Um, in about a month, on December 8th, a new cath lab will open at Lake City Medical Center it's uh, right uh, part of the hospital. Currently, we're in sort of an outbuilding. It's part of the hospital. I actually have toured it this week. It's, it's a beautiful facility. Uh, we'll have four rooms for patients there. And when we open that, then we are going to start doing uh, angioplasties and stents uh, here in Lake City at Lake City Medical Center. Talk which, about how important that is to, to be able to do that here. I know I've talked to doctors before. When they have to ship patients to Gainesville, then families have got to make arrangements to, for babysitters so that you can go visit the patient. Right. And the healing process sometimes a little stressful. Now with this heart cath lab, you can come visit here in Lake City or, or if you live in an out outlying area of Swanee or Hamilton or anywhere around here, they can come to Lake City. Right, the, exactly. I mean, it'll be much more friendly for the patients. You don't um, have to make the trip you know, down the highway to Gainesville. We won't have to use the uh, the rescue vehicles to transport patients to North Florida. Uh, what's actually interesting and amazing over the last, I don't know, couple of years, I guess, we've started doing a lot of our casts and a lot of our interventions, which is angioplasties and stents from, if I can show it here, the, the radial artery, which is an artery that runs right through your wrist. So we can go up through here and get up and get to your heart, take our pictures, and we can actually do the fixing. So when you're done, instead of having most people who've had heart casts have had it through the groin, it's, you have to either put a clamp there or put and pressure you, there. You can't move right away. Right. You've got to you stay, gotta stay still for anywhere from two to four hours. So it's a bit uncomfortable for the patient, especially if back trouble. Um, I did three casts yesterday at Lake City Medical Center from the wrist, and literally we can walk the patient out of the cath lab. How, how important is that? You, you talk about being able to walk after this, this type of procedure. It, it, does but, it do but, something psychologically for the patient to say, that wasn't that bad, right. and their healing process moves along quicker? Well, they love it because, they, they, you know, I don't know that, I guess that's true to some extent, but the, the, the big thing is they can go back and be sitting up with, the, they just have a little, it's like a watch band with a pressure over the hole in the artery, and literally as soon as they get back, they can sit up and have a cup of coffee, which is what most people's biggest concern is. But is we'll have, so have a cup of coffee. Having some coffee or something to eat, because we do the, the procedure with you know, not having eaten anything since midnight, and so it's nice to go back um, just and be totally alert and comfortable. So being able to do this type of procedure in Lake City is, has several advantages. Cost-wise, uh, I'm sure that insurance companies are going to be glad that this is able to, to happen here in Lake City versus having to pay for rescue unit to go to Gainesville and things like that. So what, what we're basically saying is that your organization has made a commitment to Lake City. Uh, and and your, talk about your, your, the Cardiac and Vascular Institute. It's a group of doctors that are based in Gainesville, 
but they're going to be committed to Lake City. Right, exactly. Well, let me just jump back one, one second. And as far as the cath part and stents, we actually a lot of times send people home the same day. So you come in, we put your stent in, we give you some blood thinners, watch you for three, four hours, and go home the same day. So it's really nice for patients not having to spend extra time in the hospital. Um, our, our group, we're a large group. We have 18 physicians now, uh, nine physician extenders, nurse practitioners, or, or um, PAs. Uh, we cover, we have two offices in Gainesville, an office here at Lake City Medical Center on the campus, and uh, we have an office in Stark, Florida. Over the last six months, well, we've been coming here, I guess, for five or six years, but over the last six months, we've really made a commitment to this community and this hospital, and so we now provide 24-hour day, seven day a week, 365 days a year coverage of the hospital and the emergency room. So, and and uh, the, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, the, the cardiac group, you were interventional cardiologists, and there was a kind of a combination at, at there were two groups in Gainesville that competed, and um, for a lot of reasons, healthcare has become a little bit more competitive, a little bit more difficult, and um, cardiology has had a lot, a lot of change around, across the country. We, we merged two and a half years ago and are now all, all one group. So it's one group, and, and they're all here in Lake City. I wanted to talk about, you showed me before we came on the, the set, another innovation uh, that you had in your pocket that was kind of almost like I guess we can't say it's science fiction anymore, but Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. this is uh, this is kind of a unique uh, tool for for doctors and cardiologists. It looks like a jump drive. Yeah. Well, this. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Wait, I'll hold, I, let me see. see. If we I don't get know if you can to, see to this. Zoom, in on, zoom this. in on this. Or should I hold yeah. it? Let's um, see. The, the, no, we're, we're switching gears. We're going to go from blocked arteries to heart rhythm problems. So sometimes people have irregular heartbeats. There you, um, go. you can see that. That's how big so, that is. Yeah. In your so left. this is the old device, which is is called a reveal monitor, and then this is the new device, which is called a link, L-I-N-Q. So you can see see the difference in size. So what we do is we put these in, and this has a uh, it's like a Holter monitor that probably a lot of people have worn, where you wear it for 24 hours. This is essentially that same type of technology, but it's inside you and the battery in this device would last for three years. And we put it in um, just under local, we'll just put a little numbing there and then essentially you inject this under the skin right, right, right above where my pocket is. So it'd sit under your skin like that, um, no stitches involved, just a couple little steri strips, and then it's in and good to go for, for three years. So we'll set it so that if your heart rate goes below a certain number or above a certain number, it will record your heart rate. Or if you have a spell where you feel your heart racing or skipping or pass out, for instance, there's a magnet you hold over it and that will record what's in it. And then we can download what's your rhythm over the internet. And in our office, we print out a strip that shows what the rhythm is when this happened. Let me ask you, is this for patients who, I'm, I'm having an attack but when I get to the doctor, I'm not having the attack anymore. So I don't, I'm not, it's not happening now, doctor. So you don't know what exactly happened. Exactly. Now you have a better way to, to right. determine what happened. Right. Yeah, and the way, the way we do, do that, we, we have monitors we put on for 24 hours. We have monitors that we put on for 30 days, which is, you can imagine having a couple of patches on your chest and having to carry around this little box for 30 days. It's a bit of a nuisance. So if you don't mind having a little sort of micro scar on your chest, you know, this thing is a, is a much better way to do it. Now, do you, how do you get the reading out of it? You just... Uh, you download it over the internet. Oh, you don't so you, even can, have do it, to... you can do it from your, your home? Yeah. yeah, you don't even have to come to the office. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing technology. Yeah. I want to talk about another technology that, that we mentioned, uh, again, before we came on the, on the, the set this morning. Uh, there's new, uh, uh, you've got modems installed in EMS units. Talk about right. what that does. Well, Lake City Medical Center was, was fortunate enough to grant to the EMS units here in Columbia County and in Suwannee County uh, modems where if, if the uh, EMS officers go to your home and you're having chest pain, they can record an EKG and then uh, essentially fax it to the emergency room either at Lake City Medical Center or at North Florida Regional Medical Center. And the doctor there can look at the EKG and make a decision. If you're having a true heart attack, which shows up on an EKG sometimes, then the call would be to go 
straight to North Florida and bypass Lake City Medical Center because we take those patients emergently to the heart cath lab, do a catheterization, find the blocked artery, put a little wire down the artery, and then put a balloon in to get the blood flow back. And what we say in, in the business is time is muscle. So your heart is a muscle that pumps about 100,000 times a day, and it's supplied with, with blood flow from arteries. So if you look at my fist, my three fingers represent the three main arteries. If one of those arteries closes off completely, then that area of the heart muscle is getting no flow, and that's a heart attack. So the quicker you can get in and open that artery, the less muscle you lose, and the less muscle you lose, the better your heart's gonna pump, the less problems you'll have down the road with heart failure, uh, with uh, heart rhythm problems, and you'll live longer. So uh, in instead of coming to the hospital, getting evaluated, again, you may be having a heart attack while, while you're being evaluated, then you get the evaluation, then they ship you to Gainesville anyway. So there's the time is, is extremely important because that muscle in your heart doesn't grow back, correct? Right. So there's a time course where over, over a period of somewhere between 20 minutes and six hours, the muscle starts dying. So the earlier you get that artery open, the less muscle dies and the better the patient will do in the long run. Um, so if, if the ER gets a call that, let's say it's two in the morning and I'm on call and a heart attack is happening here in Columbia County, then they would activate us. So I would come to the hospital, the cath lab team would come to the hospital and we'd be there at the door waiting for the patient to come so and get them to the cath lab and we've you know we've gotten people to the cath lab in open in less than 15 minutes if, if we know about it so you know there's the time from whenever the heart attack starts to rescue gets there there's a time for transport from home to the hospital and then our time in the hospital so we're, we try to make all those times shorter so the patient does better and the heart attack smaller so i guess one message to to all the citizens out in the community is you know if you're having chest pain don't delay call either go to the emergency room or call rescue and then a diagnosis can be made sometimes we see people who think ah it's my stomach and they take acid yeah, medicine I, or things like that let's, let's, i wanted to talk about that because i mean is there a, a tried and true way to know that you're having a heart attack because i some people say well i've got gas or i've uh, had some bad sushi or, or whatever right uh, is there a way to know or do no, you... there's not any absolute way to know. The, the typical symptoms would be sort of, you know, crushing chest pains under here, get sweaty, sometimes short of breath, sometimes sick on the stomach, uh, sometimes the pain goes down your arm. Uh, but if you look in a big study that was done up in Massachusetts called the Framingham study, 25% of people that had heart attacks never sought care with, with a doctor. So Really? Uh, yeah. And what happens to them? Is this the episode goes away and until the next episode? Well, or maybe they go to their doctor and get an EKG and the doctor looks at the EKG and says, who, you had a heart attack. And then the patient says, oh, well, I remember two months ago I had this horrible chest pain and I thought it was my stomach. Um, or, you know, the tragedy would be that they have a heart attack and die. Right. Some of those people are gonna die. So um, I remember when I was doing my training, there was an orthopedic surgeon who, young guy, smoked. He was having bad chest pain, had a bottle of antacid next to his bed and was found dead in bed the next morning and clearly was having a heart attack. So he was self-diagnosing that he had an acid problem or right. an acid problem. Right, right. Uh, at what age should people start seeing or should start con be concerned about uh, heart disease? I mean, is it, or is it if you have a if you have a family history, there should be younger checking with your doctor. Well, I th yeah, I don't think there's an you can't say a certain age. I think it would depend on the risk factors. So if you had a lot of those risk factors. Um, then you would be more concerned. Um, I would say it's important if you have blood pressure problems to take care of your blood pressure. If you have cholesterol problems, it's extremely important to start treatment at a young age because you can, you can halt or stop the development of plaques. If you looked at autopsies from soldiers in the Vietnam and Korean War, there were young gentlemen in their early 20s who had early plaques in their arteries. So this is a process that starts when you're young and gradually builds up over 10, 20, 30 years to the point where all of a sudden the arteries 75 or 80 percent narrowed and then you start having symptoms from not enough blood flow to the heart and then if it progresses on to 100 percent block that's a heart attack. What about diet? The, you know you, you're in North Florida where everybody cooks with bacon fat and you know everything is flavored with some sort of, of bad thing for you. Uh, is diet just extremely important? Sure I mean it's yeah, the, if you can cut back on saturated fat and uh, 
uh, it's a good thing, and cholesterol, it's a good thing. Uh, you know, truth is, I mean, I've been at this for 30 years now, it's very hard to get somebody who's 65 and who likes having bacon and eggs for breakfast to stop. You know, it's just hard. So the good news is we have these medicines, the statins that I mentioned, that even if you can't change your diet, we can knock your cholesterol back significantly with them. But diet, weight reduction, and exercise are all important ways to try and prevent heart disease. And, yeah. and then I have to put in a plug again for not smoking. I mean, again, smoking is the worst thing anybody could do for themselves. Let's talk about uh, after the fact. So now we've gone through, we've had a heart cath. It, do you preach diet, weight, exercise after that, or you're gonna be back here sooner than later? Well, we do. I mean, we talk about it, you know, I'm usually pretty busy, so my talking is pretty brief, but we have a patient that comes in with a heart attack, is seen by a dietitian at the hospital, they're seen by a cardiac rehab person to talk about exercise, and then when they come back to the office, oftentimes they're seen by one of our mid-level providers who, who spend a little bit more time talking about the importance of those things. And smoking cessation is another thing we do at the hospital. So it's, it's kind of a team concept. Absolutely. that Everybody's trying to make that, that point to someone that uh, if you want to live longer, uh, well, and you can, I mean, it, it's obvious that you have somebody who you do a cath on and put a stent in, you got their attention, right, for a period of time. And the question is whether you keep their attention or do they, you know, slip back to their old ways over time. Is there a record for a number of stents that you've put in somebody? I mean, uh, I, I can see yeah. people coming back and back. And say, I don't think I'd ever want to have to have the procedure. If I do, then, then so be it, but I don't want to have to have more than one. I think my record in one patient is 15. 15? Yeah. Wow. This is a young guy too. Really? Yeah. Uh, if you'd like more information on cardiology or the Cardiac and Vascular Institute, you can uh, contact uh, the office at uh, 752-0515, or you can log on and uh, see that lakecitymedicals.com is the uh, website. Dr. Stephen Rourke is a cardiologist with the Cardiac and Vascular Institute. A lot of good things happening at Lake City Medical Center with regard to heart health and heart survival uh, here in Lake City and Columbia County. Dr. Work, thank you for being on the program. My pleasure, thanks for having me. And thank you for watching Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television. Till next time, I'm Mike McGee, so long. <laughs>